presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Celtics. It's a beautiful night for baseball in Atlanta and enter Inciarte's on another roll. Chase Peterson too as the Braves try to make it two straight over the San Diego Padres here at Turner Field in Atlanta. Hi again friends Chip and Joe welcome back to the ballpark great ball game last night first home win for Julio Tehran he got seven runs of support and on this the final day of August you know Matt Whistler would like similar offensive production as he gets the ball against his former club tonight. Well one of the keys last night has been something that's been very good for the Braves all during the month of August and that's hitting with runners in scoring position. Most of the summer there were times where the Braves got men on base. They just couldn't get them around couldn't get them in and it started with Freddie Freeman dropping one in center field getting a run in. Jace Peterson joined the fray against his old organization. Dansby Swanson had a big night with a two run double. He drove in three runs on the night to give him four in only his first week in the big league. So not bad. So take a look at some of these numbers. These numbers at the top of the list all represent the best numbers in any month this year for the Braves and the average with runners in scoring position is second among months with runners in scoring position. So that's all real good. Six for 14 last night when it counted. Let's hope there's more of the same tonight for Matt Whistler. Braves 12 and 15 so far in the month of August and indeed Matt Whistler does get the ball after his stint in Gwinnett. He came back with a flourish last time out and you know the Braves would love to see him repeat that performance at home where he has had trouble. One of the things that was very impressive about his outing in Arizona and you'll see it in some of these replays was his slider. It was outstanding against the Diamondbacks. He had right handers fishing for it. Little tapper here. He handled it just fine. He also had left handers swinging over the top at it on pitches that weren't strikes but they look like strikes. That to me was the difference for Matt in his last start and hopefully tonight he'll match these numbers again. Eight innings two hits and just one run. Matt's faced the Padres once before that was a couple of years ago out in San Diego. So Paul Bird what are you looking for <laughs> from Matt Whistler here in game two Love of the series the tonight. Love the the yard Chip you're on top of it. Well yeah I got to tell you uh, Joe's right on that slider was nasty had downward tilt to it. I will add to what he said which is you know what record told me when he put that glove on the inside part of the plate Matt Whistler nailed it didn't move a whole lot and finally when you go down and you come back up which I did a number of times you got a little edge to you. You're a little angry. You want to stay here. You figure it out and there's certain things you can do in triple A that you can't get away with in big leagues because these are the best hitters in the world. So I think Matt Whistler bowed his neck out there on the mound had a little edge to him. I'm looking forward to see him tonight show that same oomph when he gets out there. All Chip. right Paul great points. Paul's neck is bowed. He's ready to go to <laughs> yeah, game is. two Braves and the Padres pretty night here in Atlanta. Let's see if the Braves can continue their good work on this very brief three game homestand first pitch lineup some more coming up right after this. Atlanta Braves baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day.
is sponsored by Delta Airlines, your local Ford dealer, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Braves Baseball is sponsored by Chevrolet. Back in Atlanta, Matt Whistler about to take the mound for the Braves, looking for his sixth win of the season. Tonight he makes his 22nd start. And boy, was he good against the Arizona Diamondbacks, as we just showed you. Matt gave up one run, two hits, and eight innings of work. Needed just 103 pitches, and it was so noticeable, Joe, to have a Frankly, big league game working out in the desert. We all had a good time covering the game, watching him work, and the results certainly were to the good side with the Braves winning three to one. Uh, it was a quickly paced game by what by the standards we've been seeing. So it was an all around good effort by everybody. So Matt to the center of the diamond. He'll face the 55 and 76 San Diego Padres. Braves beat him last night by a final score of seven to three. 23 years old, 6'3, 205 out of Bryan, Ohio. There is the line from that game. Three walks, four strikeouts, 103 pitches, but was still throwing strong in the eighth inning. He was still fresh and had it working. Time for his four keys to pitching success against his old organization. Number one, slider Palooza. Are you kidding me? He had a great slider out in Arizona. I hope he's got it working again today. And number two, crowd them to make it even more effective. Don't be afraid to pitch inside to some of these guys, especially the lefties, and set up that slider. This is an offensively challenged San Diego ball club. Andy Green is their manager. His lineup is very similar to what he had last night, with one notable exception. Daniel Norris is in there behind the plate. Christian Bethencourt had to be placed on the disabled list with a oblique problem or an intercostal muscle problem is what the diagnosis was last night. San Diego 15th in the National League in batting average 10th in runs scored 7th in homers 14th in strikeouts and 14th in on base percentage. Yeah not good not good. Umpiring crew tonight as signed by Major League Baseball Jim Wolf will call balls and strikes that's Adrian Johnson at first base Chris Siegel is at second. And the crew chief is Eric Cooper, Hillman, third base. Final day of August. Can you believe it? 2016, the Braves 12 and 15 so far this month. It's been a good month. Good in this respect. It's been 
a month marked by improvements yes. in a lot of different areas. So Whistler ready to go. Travis Jankowski is the San Diego leadoff man and their center fielder. He had a two hit last two hit night last night. And he's been a pest getting on base to start the game. Let's see what Whistler does as his first is off the plate. Ball one. 90 degrees at first pitch. And a ground ball to short. Dansby with a backhand. And he makes the play. There's the first out. First chance handled by the Brave shortstop. No trouble. One up, one down for Will Myers. Myers was 0 for 4. And the Braves are catching him at a good time. He's hitless in his last 14 at bats. But this guy can hit. Nice to catch him cold. Twenty five years old out of Thomasville North Carolina. Still just twenty five huh amazing. Twenty six on December 10th. And already this year twenty three home runs twenty three stolen bases twenty four doubles. And a 260 average. One and two. Six strikeouts in those 14 at bats. The one thing that really stood out I, when I was talking about the sliders and his effectiveness in Arizona was the fact that no one for about three or four or five starts had been pitching the way Matt pitched, which was close enough to get swings when he was ahead in the count. There's another strikeout for Myers. This time he's caught looking. And 95 miles an hour on that fastball. That may be the top end for him this year. That might be the hardest pitch he's thrown. Some zip. So two quick outs and Jan Hervis Salarte is up. He's the San Diego third baseman. Salarte had a hit last night. I, and you make a good point about Matt. When he wasn't throwing strikes, they were still competitive pitches. Yes. And by that we mean pitches that weren't so bad that the hitter didn't have to think about swinging. And Solarte bounces one through the left side with a two out single. And that's the first hit for the Padres. Well, in that start in Arizona, he walked the second battery face, then he retired. I think it was six or seven in a row and he walked another batter right. He really settled in after that he only walked one more batter over his next six innings. So coming back he did have maybe a, a nerve or two in that first inning. But boy he settled in was tough after that. And efficient 103 yes. pitches in eight innings. Yes. Which again at the time he pitched was so refreshing. As the Braves staff collectively. We're having a lot of 22, 25, 29 pitch innings from the men starting the games. So three straight left handed bats now for Matt Whistler. Solarte, a switch hitter, is aboard after his two out single. And that's fouled off Tyler Flowers' glove. No balls, two strikes. That sun peeking through the stadium may be in. Matt's eyes out of the stretch, but it looks like Freddie's okay over there at first base. Nothing in two. For Alex Dickerson. Who became the first Padres rookie to hit a home run in four consecutive games. That was at the end of July. As I mentioned, he has eight in total this year. The one two pitch is fisted foul. And after
after the bounce. A Braves fan comes up with a souvenir. He looks like he's from Roswell. Oh yeah, yeah. You just give the ball away? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's Roswell like. Maybe there's something wrong with that ball because the other guy didn't want it. Did you see that? Uh-uh. This kid flipped it to another fan, and then the fan flipped it back to the guy in the brave shirt. <laughs> Never seen that before. Uh -uh. Maybe the guy in the gray shirt said, well, I'm from Milton. We don't take foul balls from fans from Roswell. <laughs> I keep it. I don't want it. I don't want it. You Roswell people. Uh, no, you take it. No, I don't want it. Oh, no, that's nice. Kid should have gotten the guys frozen lemonade out of that deal. No telling what was in that. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. The pitch is. I only say that because oh. I've seen you with a cup and a straw before, and <laughs> doesn't stay full long, does it? Nope. <laughs> uh. All right, no walks here. Yeah, far enough. He went. Uh, he threw a fastball down the middle that got fouled off. Make another good pitch with it. And he missed. So a single and a walk with two outs. And that'll bring up Ryan Schimpf. Schimpf has been a nice find. Originally in the Toronto system. Now he's a Padre and getting a chance to play a lot. Two on, two out, opening inning. And all of a sudden, it has the zone bouncing around on him here. One ball, no strikes. Schimpf is out of LSU. His dad went to LSU and was taken in the 2009 draft. I don't know if it's an apt comparison, but maybe this guy's going to turn into the latest version of Jed Jerko. Uh huh. Was a power hitting infielder for the Padres, now doing the same for the Cardinals. Ryan's 5'9", 180 pounds. Took him a long time to get to the big leagues. This year, his first major league action after signing in 2009. So he's been a persistent performer. Pretty good defender last year between double A and triple A played 107 games only three errors. 23 homers 63 RBIs. Well like I said last night anytime you find a middle infielder that's got his kind of pop that's quite a find. Thank goodness there's a screen. That had Roger McDowell headed to the water jug quickly. Did that miss the screen. No it got it and kicked it out. But it was right at Roger. Probably right in the sun. Yep. Probably never saw it. So after two quick outs, Whistler's going to make his 22nd pitch.
Way too many pitches after two out, nobody on. Arcio waits on deck. He had a big game last night, including a home run. Let's see him in the second. The runners will go with a full count, two outs. And a swing and a miss. That'll take care of Schimpf and San Diego. However, it took Whistler 24 pitches to get three outs after he got the first two very quickly. The Braves won handily last night 7 3 6 for 14 were the Bravos with runners in scoring position and Paul Clemens I'm sure scouted that as he'll face the team that drafted him for the first time tonight 28 years old you see his first second and third times through the order very odd numbers in terms of how ugly they are early on fixes it a little bit the second time through and then bounces back to have some high numbers the third time through that. Bears watching tonight because that's very unusual. His fastball 90 to 94 has a good curveball and a changeup. So here's your Braves lineup tonight. Ender Inciarte, another double digit hit streak at the top of the order. Adonis Garcia's hit and has been on in 19 of his last 21. You know about Freeman, Kemp, and Marcakis. Tyler Flowers, Jace Peterson, Dansby Swanson with three RBIs last night, batting eighth. And the Braves pitcher Matt Whistler rounds out the starting nine. What another great run for Ender Inciarte. A ten game hitting streak. He's got 18 hits in that stretch. His long hitting streak this year was 19 games. From July 19th to August 9th. Clemens slings the first one in for a called strike. Clemens got beat his last start against the Cubs, went five and a third innings, seven hits, five runs, didn't walk anybody, struck out six. In fact, he's got 33 strikeouts in 42 and two thirds innings. That's a real good ratio. Just that he's given up a ton of hits and 10 homers. 275 mark against him batting average wise. Paul did reach the major leagues with the Astros and didn't have a whole lot of luck either as a starter or as a reliever as this one's right through the wickets of Luis Sardinas and there's a break for Atlanta E6 puts in CRT aboard to start the opening inning for Atlanta. What happened here looked up too soon. Was already looking toward first base. Did not have it in a glove. That's another part of the problem for the Padres. No doubt about it. Milwaukee still got a nice lead. They may be tough to catch.
So Clemens to the stretch immediately. Madonis Garcia the batter, and that's off the plate. If you'd have told me after April that Adonis Garcia would be hitting in the 260s with 11 homers, that he would have played much better defense. Remember, he had eight or nine errors in April. Right. I think he has eight or nine since. That he'd be hitting second in this lineup, I'd have said no chance. No, no way. Not no how. And a foul ball at the plate. It's two and one. But you know what? Give him credit. He was sent down to AAA, wasn't happy about it. And I don't think any player who has had time in the major leagues is ever happy about going back. You haven't heard of Adonis' story. The Braves sent him down to put him in left field. Well, he came back. He hasn't played at all in left field. So maybe that's the secret. Didn't play left field in good net. He just <laughs> played third. <laughs> so best laid plans of mice and men. It's all worked out for Garcia. Two balls and a strike. Going. And fouled away. Had that lean working, had a little lean and weight over on the right foot. I mentioned the story about Adonis's brother and his decision to leave the Cuban team, leave the Japanese minor league team that he's been playing for. I asked Adonis in my best Spanish, which is awful. If everything's okay with his brother, and after he stopped laughing, <laughs> he said yes. And his brother is, I think, 24 years old, and the plan is for him to go establish residency in the Dominican Republic and then play down there and hopefully get noticed, signed, scouted, and maybe eventually get to the big leagues like his brother. You're selling your Spanish short. I've heard you speak it. Tequila, cerveza, <laughs> tacos. Yep. Really good with that one. Mm -hmm. Burrito grande, <laughs> por favor. <laughs> I've heard you say that many times. Three balls, two strikes. Ander is chased back. Braves drafted Clemens in the seventh round in 2008. And can you believe it was five years ago that the Braves traded for Michael Bourne? No. Runner goes and swing and a miss. The throw by Norris from his knees. No chance to get in Ciarte who had a great jump. It's steal for the Braves center fielder, his 12th. Garcia's down on strikes. One man down. Dax Norris has good numbers throwing out base stealers, but Tough to do it from your knees if you can't get the ball to the bag. Got a good pitch to throw on, too. I guess might have been distracted a little bit by Garcia falling across the plate. It's funny you mentioned that throwing from the knees part. Best guy I ever saw do that was Benito Santiago. Yeah. He was an all star with the Padres behind the plate. I know he didn't finish his career with him. He ought to have his number retired in San Diego. Really? Yeah, he was, I mean, he was that good. Santiago played with the Padres late 80s and 90s and hit in the middle of their lineup for a long time. And Enciarte swipes third. That was as easy as they get. Smart by Freddie. He saw it. He just stood there like a statue letting the pitch come, knowing Ender had third base stolen. So maybe a free RBI for free men if he can put it in play here. Nice behind 0 2.
back to the mound. And the throw is going to go to first. And Myers came off the bag just in case Inciarte thought about breaking for the plate. That hurts. Freddie can't bring Ender home. That's the second out. And now Matt Kemp will hit. Interesting that they didn't really have a shift on for Freddie. Even with a runner at third, they could do that and keep Solarte kind of camped over there to hold Ender close. But no big shift for him. Maybe a shift in the way they're pitching him. They sure have a shift on for Matt Kemp, don't they? Three on the left side of the infield. Which would mean that Shimp is in the shift over there. I'm glad you said that. And thank goodness it's not happening at the San Diego home ballpark. Mm -hmm. That would be a career threatening statement. Matt had an 0 for 5 last night. Let's see if he can break out here in the first. Clemens just balked. Matt Kemp was asking for time, and Clemens was just charged with a balk. Jim Wolf saw something, pointed at him, and then immediately to the plate, and the Braves get a gift run. And he's in the windup. He's been in the windup since uh, Freddie made the out. Yeah, oh, a little shoulder turn. You see it? Yep. But you saw Kemp ask for time. Maybe we can sync that up. Now, I don't know that he obviously hadn't been granted time. Watch right there, the shoulders twisted. Ender saw it. That's a break. One nothing as the Braves scored a run in one of the most creative ways of the year. An error, two stolen bases, and a balk. Love it. Watch Kemp. Watch the S on Clemens. Yeah, there was a little twist. Yeah, he didn't ask for it till afterwards. Yep. Good catch, Joe. So now the count two and two. Bases are empty. That's got to make a pitcher mad, doesn't it? I would think. He had a ground ball routine. Ball to shortstop that turns into an error and two steals. And then just a little tiny twitch costs you a run. That's why so many pitchers would prefer to work out of the stretch. There's less room for error, especially where a balk is concerned. Again, a 2 2 pitch. And Kemp beats the shift. How about that? A clean single to the first base side of second base. And that's the first hit of the night for the Braves. And it snaps an 0 for 10 for Matt. Fastball to the outer part of the plate. And right back through the middle. Support from Arcacus. Nick's had a terrific month. One of the reasons why the Braves are averaging almost five runs a game in August is because Nick Marcakis has knocked in 21 runs by himself this month.
Darren Balsley, the pitching coach there next to Andy Green. Nick made him throw a strike, and he did. It's now two and one. Balsley's a highly got regarded pitching coach, so highly regarded that he survived two managerial changes when Bud Black was let go, and then when they replaced Murphy with Andy Green in the offseason. Three balls and a strike. Tough duty for that tandem, Andy Green and Darren Balsley. They traded away a lot of their club at the deadline. As we discussed last evening, a couple of different organizational shifts have taken place the last couple of years. So What's the plan? How's it going to work? How are we going to get there? Yeah. In a division that is got the Dodgers and their open checkbook. It's got the Giants and their 475 consecutive sellouts working. The challenges of playing the Rockies and Arizona as well. Full count pitch. Kemp at first is running. And Marquecas sprays it down the line, and that's into the seats. He Shelby Miller's back in the big leagues. Pitch today for Arizona. He got beat. Giants won the game four to two. But glad to know he's was called up and pitched today. Again the three two and again it's out of play. I don't know how many of the four runs he allowed. I know he allowed a couple in the first inning. I hope he comes back and has a good final month. Me yeah. too. Really plays well for however long he's a member of the Diamondbacks. They got a nice start from Zach Greinke last night. Did the Diamondbacks but lost today for two. Again the pitch. And Marquecas is retired. Clemens had to work very hard. He threw 26 pitches in the opening inning, and he box home the game's lone run. Seats and a modern cantilever design. SunTrust Park will offer maximized sight lines and the ability for fans to sit closer to the action than any other ballpark in baseball. More than 10,000 fans have already received their season tickets, and areas of the ballpark are already sold out. So don't delay. Get your SunTrust Park season tickets today by visiting Braves.com slash SunTrust Park. Uh-oh, party. Party here tonight. Maybe a birthday party. Team Bride. Oh, wedding party. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
we will keep an eye on that group. Oh all night. yeah. Mm -hmm. They may have some cups with straws in them. Line by Oswaldo Arcia down the left field line and the that boy got turned around on him. Come on, Chris. Told Kevin Seitzer before the game how proud we were of that piece that he and Paul Bird did last night. Oh, look out. And how timely it was because we got that good shot of Arcia's home run with his hands inside the baseball. I said, unfortunately, the, the video was from a guy from the other team that hit it. But <laughs> He said no actually he had gone upstairs to look at that swing and called over uh, Jose to look at it and show him what the deal was by comparison to what they'd been working on with Ender. That was something I'd never ever heard of or would have even thought about how a hitter would practice that point you make about keeping your hands inside the baseball. We talk about it all the time. Just uh, how do you how do you apply it apply a drill. Yeah, yeah right. I, I think it's terrific. That was a terrific pitch. Arcia is retired. One out. Last night, the home run right here. You can see that knob of the bat pointed right at the baseball. He's staying inside the baseball, and then you think there's no way the barrel can get to the baseball from that position, but it does with the help of the hips. And he hit one out of the ballpark. So take me through. What the drill looks like, and, and what was the contraption that Kevin had um, manufactured, I guess, in the in the batting cage? Oh, it was just a. It looked like something I'd rig up for Kathy when she needed to grow beans, you know, just some kind of rope or vine right. or something. He just hooked a rope to the top of the batting cage, ran it to a weight weighted batting tee to the back of home plate. And then had Ender or anybody else that wants to use the drill stand right up next to that fence. I mean that rope basically. Right. Here you go. And in order to hit that soft toss, if you have a long swing, you're going to hit the rope. And so that last shot, and we'll put it back up here in a second. That rope is what? 12 inches, 13 inches away from the, the batter, if that? I don't know. But I mean, just to look. You could see how close it was. On that shot we had from behind Ender in the cage. Another good slider. That might have been a curveball. So look at that. Yeah. From where his hands are. Yeah, maybe a little more than a foot, but not much. How in the world is a hitter going to swing the bat and not hit the string? That's the idea, right? Got to stay inside the string with your hands and then the barrel will follow. I think it's genius. Great drill. More and more guys are using it and. Kevin said that one of the things. That helped Tyler flowers get going was that drill. Because there were some guys throwing fastballs by him. And he's started getting his hands inside the baseball on those guys that throw hard and getting the barrel to the ball. Fly ball toward Kemp in left and Whistler has a one two three second inning. He has struck out four men in his first two frames and he enjoys an early one nothing lead.
A free concert for everyone who comes to Turner Field. Limited VIP field passes are available for the show. They're only $10 each. Act fast by visiting Braves.com slash Faith Day today. That means we'll be here. Yes. That means we'll be home. Yes. Can't wait. Ooh. Cotton candy for the occasion. Don't know about you, but when I got the suitcase back out of the closet, I did say a few words I wish I hadn't said. Yeah. I started packing a little bit this afternoon. Yeah. And when I opened up my suitcase, my suitcase said, really? Yeah. <laughs> Bench me or trade me? <laughs> yeah. At Philly, at Washington. Braves are back in Atlanta on September 8th. We won't play until September 9th. We'll host the New York Mets for a weekend series. Then the Marlins will be in town September 12th, 13th, and 14th. Jeff Rancourt will return in Miami colors. So we'll look forward to seeing Jeff and the Fish, who have not had much luck against the Braves this year. Oh, and they're behind tonight, two to one to the Mets early. Tyler Flowers, a one ball, one strike count as he starts the Brave second. Oh, well, that was lucky that missed Dull. his hand. Yep, I was just thinking the same thing. Whew. We've seen that movie before. Yeah, that ran right in on his hands. He's looking over in the Braves dugout. I think Kevin Seitzer was saying the same thing. To third. Oh, Salarte bobbled. Catcher running, though, still able to get his man. And it was a nifty play. Flowers retired for the first out. One away for Jace Peterson. He's another hot hitter, as you'll see on our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot feature. Yeah, I like what Jace is doing. Last nine games, high average, high on huge on base percentage. Are you kidding? 545 over nine games. And he's doing his part of driving in runs too to bump up that risk number. Of course, this is the final day of August. As of tomorrow, Major League Baseball's rosters can expand. Don't know how many or if any roster moves will be made by the Braves tomorrow. Meaning players coming up right away. Still some playoff races to be determined in the Braves minor league system. I'm guessing A.J. Przinsky will be activated tomorrow. Yeah, and maybe some a couple other guys that are on the DL before players from the minors are called up. We'll see. Plus, I, I anticipate a couple of moves tonight before, unless the deadline's already passed, I figured it was midnight tonight that you've got to have a deal done to have a player eligible for the postseason. Yeah, I don't know what for any what? of those front runners. I don't know what time of day that is, yeah, but today either. is the day. Uh, the Indians made a deal. They got Coco Crisp. Yeah, that was a good move from Oakland because Brantley's been hurt. They've got another kid who's suspended, whose name escapes me. Yes. Uh, off the top of my head. But Coco Crisp, a veteran guy who's been through the playoff wars before. And he played for Terry Francona in Boston. And he started his career in Cleveland and was a big crowd favorite there. So we'll keep an eye on the wires tonight and see if anything like that takes place. Two balls, two strikes. One name that was claimed on waivers was Yasiel Puig. And apparently the team that made the claim could not work out a deal with the Dodgers. So Puig in all likelihood will remain with the Dodger organization, but no one knows if Puig will come back to the bigger league club. There was some talk that with Ryan Braun clearing waivers that maybe there'd be a match of Braun and the Dodgers for Yasiel Puig and others perhaps. Yeah, that's when you got to hope that whoever claims him is the team you're talking to the most. Right. Jace pops one into left and that'll be a can of corn for Dickerson who makes the play two outs. And that deadline is midnight tonight. 
So as far as I can tell, nothing has been announced yet. Maybe there'll be a flurry of action after the game is played tonight. Watch, we'll have to wait and see. Good night last night for Dansby Swanson, a three RBI game. Pretty cool to look up and be playing for your hometown team and see your name on the scoreboard and you're hitting 300. And very quickly becoming a fan favorite here. You got it. These are exciting times for the Braves, for the fans, for these players themselves. I'll be really intrigued with the numbers that we see over the final five weeks, the mental images we have of the youngsters when they get here, and how differently they look, how differently they play if it all comes spring training next year. Because by that time for Dansby, it won't be new anymore. He's still going through the league a first time. He's seeing pitchers he's never seen before in many cases. Getting used to the big league lifestyle, playing at home, all those things that I'm sure many of us don't even think about. But what a great level headed kid. He is not at all overwhelmed by this. No, and that's something I have contended all summer is that the more time he gets in, the better suited he will be for a full season once next April rolls around. He'll know what to expect. And so your point that you made with Paul Bird a little while ago on the uh, pregame, run him out there, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think at this point no reason to hold him back from anybody that comes along. In fact, when you're a competitor and an athlete like uh, Dansby Swanson, you want to see the best. You you want to see these guys you've heard and seen on TV, heard about and seen on TV. Let me let me try myself against them. That's a great challenge. That's popped up toward right. Garcia in the corner and in foul ground will make the grab just shy of the wall. And that retires the side. We head to the third inning. one nothing, Atlanta the lead. Talked about Dansby Swanson. I'm really impressed with his plate discipline. The fact that he doesn't look overwhelmed. I went and I asked a bunch of scouts. One of my favorite one came from a White Sox scout. And he says, Paul, you guys got a baseball player. He said, we forget sometimes we draft guys that have great tools. They run well, they throw well, but they get them in the game. They don't understand the game. They can't base run or they can't pick up a slider. They said, Dansby Swanson's not going to be the fastest, not going to have the most power. He may not hit 370, but he is a very good player all the way around, and he's a baseball player. Guys, back to you. Paul, on, along those same lines, uh, 
what I keep hearing and I keep telling other people about Swanson is that he's not really great at any one thing, but he's good at everything. He can do everything well. That's just it. Um, you know, and in a game where it's like the combine in the NFL, you really value tools. You know, baseball is such a skill set that you have to have the hand-eye coordination. You have to love the game. You have to be able to play it over and over again. And, you know, Joe, you can attest to it. It's not easy to hit a baseball, so sometimes some of the best athletes in the world can't hit. And on cue, good right? glove work. Yeah, it, it, I, I've been it's actually a bit more impressed with him at the plate uh, then defensively so far and, and that's with all due respect to that game he had in Arizona where he looked like Omar Vizquel out there. Um, but at the plate I think that is the biggest concern when you call a guy up is will he be able to uh, handle himself adjust and there really hasn't been much of an adjustment period for him. He's made great contact. I'm going to give you an example of a player who played a long time in the major leagues finished up with 260 homers and 1311 RBIs. Played 20 years in the major leagues. 260 homers. So, what, 13 a year? Roughly? No, it's too many. I failed math in high school. Let's say 10, 11 home runs a year on average, right? And about 60 RBIs a year. Played 20 years. Career average of 310. You know that player was? Sounds like Jeter. That's exactly who it was. The point I want to make is this ball's bounced over the mound. And the throw to first got a fast runner by a quarter step. First year in the big leagues, Derek Jeter with the Yankees hit 250. No homers, seven RBIs. 1996, 314, 10 and 78. 97, 291, 10 homers, 70 RBIs. My point is, Derek Jeter is the ultimate baseball player. He didn't have to hit 30 home runs, drive in 120, or hit 350. He could do those things from time to time, and he had some gigantic years with the Yankees. Agreed. Uh, it's. Base hit by Myers. He can hit. I think that's uh, another example with Jeter as the example of a guy who was a really good baseball player. And I know that's why you're using him as an example. And. While there would be people that might argue with me that he wasn't great at any one thing because he was really a good defender mm -hmm. and had a 310 career average. Right. Uh, but he, he could do everything well. And he made players around him better. And you you knew that he could beat you a lot of different ways. I like I like those kind of players. This is Jan Hervis Solarte. He bats with the man aboard. And Myers got a great start and stole second base standing up. That's his 24th steal of the year. Neither Clemens nor Whistler have done much to hold runners tonight. Yeah, you already had a three step jump. So a hit could tie the game for San Diego. Solarte has the first. San Diego safety that came in the opening inning. So I want to be clear I'm not comparing Dansby Swanson to Derek Jeter. I'm not saying that he's going to be that kind of player. But I, I wonder too that in the football crazy town in which we live if some people think of the number one overall pick having an impact immediately like the number one pick in basketball or football might have it doesn't work that way necessarily in baseball right and there's been only one number one overall pick in the history of our game to go to the Hall of Fame and it just happened Ken Griffey Jr. and Whistler another walk this one on four pitches. And again, two outs, nobody on. And the first inning, a single followed by a walk. Third inning, single followed by a walk. And the concern about pitching to contact for fear of giving up that one run. I've had a scout tell me about Whistler that what he's noticed is sometimes Matt will get two quick outs, take a breath, and almost relax a little bit. 
And then all of a sudden, a hit, a walk, and right. he's in a mess almost immediately. Can't do that up here. As Alex Dickerson takes a strike. That's had a good fastball tonight. He's been at 94, 95 a couple of times. But a lot of pitches. He's thrown 45 so far. He deserved that after stealing second standing up. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Opening day last year, Will Myers was the Padres' leadoff man and center fielder. Tell you how different their club looks. And Myers, Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, Will Middlebrooks, Jed Jerko, and Yonder Alonso on opening day. Whistler's missing up and up and away a lot with his fastball here in the early going. Didn't miss, but right at the top of the zone. Two and two. And hammered foul. So you change his eye level. He swung at the pitch at the top of the zone. Now they're going to come back with a slider, but he didn't bury it. It had the plate and then just barely off the inside of the inside corner. So he was able to barrel that pitch and fortunately pull it foul. In Arizona, that was a back foot slider that everybody was swinging over the top of. And then up and away again with the fastball. So a full count. There go the runners and a bouncing ball back to the mound and Whistler's got it. He's mad because he had to work so very hard again, but he keeps the Padres off the scoreboard in inning number three. Whistler to work for the Braves. He enjoys a one nothing advantage.
Not one, but two bridal parties squaring off here oh, at Turner no. Field tonight. Oh, I hope they're on different sides of the ballpark. They don't want any cat fights tonight. Now, do you think those guys are part of the party, or did they just kind of get in, invite themselves? Wedding crashers, perhaps? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, we'll have to track their progress as, mm -hmm. yeah. as the <laughs> evening moves along. One other thing, Matt Whistler leads off. And it's a 128 hitter. He's got a couple of RBIs. the middle and Whistler has a leadoff hit. Well, this is how things got interesting last night. Julio Tehran, you might recall, led off an inning with a double and the Braves put together a five-run frame. Let's see if history repeats itself here tonight. Third inning, too. Just out of the reach of Sardinias. Uh, right off the thumb of his glove. Ander Inciarte hit a ball under the glove of Sardinius back in the first. He stole second, stole third, and scored on a balk. That's the only run so far tonight. Two balls, no strikes. From Paul Clemens. He's one and three as a Padre. Despite that losing record, Clemens has allowed three earned runs or less in five of his six starts this year with San Diego. His nine starts this year, a new career high. Well, he's like some Braves pitchers at times. He's got a, a pretty good sinker at 91 or 92, but he's not giving it a chance to sucker a swing out of it. You know, it, it's already starting off the plate and sinking even farther off the plate like that last pitch. And ball four, a single and a walk, two on, nobody out. And Darren Balsley will trot out and have a chat with Clemens. I, I don't want to say it's an epidemic, but it sure seems like at this time of year, and maybe it's the clubs that the Braves are playing and the nature of the Braves pitching staff, a lot of youngsters and guys that have been hurt. Man, we are seeing pitchers not pitch to contact so much. So much so that we're seeing walks and long extended innings and meetings on the mound from pitching coaches where you wonder what in the world the pitching coach can say. Don't you think it probably has something to do, Chip, with uh, the guys who are wanting to make a good impression? And I, and I think Paul would probably be able to address that, that they're trying not to get beat up, you know, and give up a ton of hits where it looks like they can't get anybody out. And then as a result, they're too fine. They get in bad counts. And then either walks or really hard hit base hits or long balls. I agree with you guys. And sometimes as a pitcher, it's hard to stay in yourself, within yourself when you're trying to impress. And the first thing you try to do is show them what you got, strike a guy out. And then once that happens, it's kind of like swinging as hard as you can. It's hard to square up a baseball when you swing as hard as you can every time. Same thing with pitching. It's hard to hit your spots when you're overthrowing. So a lot of time we call it cage the monster. Got to calm down, get back to trusting that command of the fastball is where it starts hitting your spots. Popped up right side. Myers will give chase. He never saw it. He could not find the ball in the high sky. And luckily for him, it's 20 rows up past the Braves dugout. 
I like that terminology, Paul. It's something we uh, apply every road trip with regard to Chip is cage the monster. And uh, as long as we can do that, we're in good shape. Not always successful. Especially when I don't have enough product in the hair and I look like Cousin It. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, it's hard to broadcast. You make me laugh like that. <laughs> but you know, Paul, I mean, I want, I'd love to talk about this a little more with you because with the advanced metrics in baseball and the increased use of uh, anal uh, analytics and things like Fox tracks, as this one's hammered toward the gap in left center field, that goes to the Xfinity sign and on one hop, that's going to score a run. A ringing double by Adonis Garcia makes it two nothing Atlanta. Before you answer Paul that's exactly what I was talking about earlier though you fall behind you get in a 3 1 count and now all of a sudden you're forced to make a better pitch than you want to. Woo. Bonus jumped all over. Another thing too, guys when you overthrow the ball flattens out so if you want the ball to sink or cut and you overthrow it usually you don't get the good loose wrist on the ball and it's straight. Joe, you can attest to you'd probably rather hit a straight fastball than one that cuts or sinks. So it's not just location. You have other things working against you as well. Yeah, you got to have loose muscles to hit, loose hands to hit. Same with pitching, I'm, I'm guessing. No, you're right. And back to Cage the Monster, there is a time where you let the monster out. You know, Fulton Avich has said that. He's like, look, I'm going to throw 99 when it's 0 2 1 2, and it's a purpose pitch. I do think there's times where, you know, and Joe, you can talk about this, where you swing, where maybe, hey, I'm I'm going to swing hard. It's my count. I got this guy. It's a straight fastball, and I'm going to try to put it in the seats. I, but if you do that every time, if you pitch like that every pitch, then you're not going to be successful. I, I heard that today, uh, Paul, in a pregame interview with Bruce Bochy about an at-bat last night that Angel Pagan had. They were down a run late. And it was apparent that he went up first swing and tried to hit the ball out of the ballpark. That was obvious to everyone involved. And Bruce Bochy was asked about it. And he goes, yeah, we like guys to be aggressive and go for it in a situation where it might turn a game around. But then the count went to 0, or 0 and 2 or 1 and 2. And Pagan cut, it, cut down on his swing, got a single, drove in a run, tied it up. There are times where you can cut it loose, absolutely. Clemens did there with a 93 mile an hour fastball. But Paul, if you're going to get beat as a pitcher, wouldn't you rather be beaten by teams hitting you and you instead of you walking the ballpark? Yes, I want to tip my cap at the end of the day. I want to say I was ahead in the count. I attacked the zone and they beat me. They hit my pitch. And it's not easy losing, but it's easier when you know that they beat you because of talent. And not because you were constantly behind in the count. You were pitching afraid to lose, not to win. You weren't attacking. You were scared. You didn't make your pitches because you hung a breaking ball, so you stopped throwing it. When you have that kind of mindset, it's really hard to walk away and take a shower. Two balls, two strikes. And Freeman fouls it away. I mean, every out isn't on a good pitch, and every hit isn't on a bad one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I let me apply that to a hitter too. If at the end of the day you take an 0 for 4 and you don't feel like you really put together competitive at bats and you weren't aggressive and and really trying to sting the ball, you're kind of feeling for it because you didn't want to strike out. I just want to put it in play. I don't want to strike out. It's kind of that same mentality. And you at the end of the day, if you've done that, well, you feel like a dog. It's like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Go up there and swing the bat. So here we are with Clemens. Hasn't gotten it out in the inning. He's thrown 60 pitches. 25 of the 60 have missed the strike zone. He's only walked a man, but he's had deep counts to virtually every Atlanta hitter tonight. Great chance for Freddie Freeman to add to a 2 0 Braves lead. The pitch. <laughs> he had a ball like that in the batting cage today in bat batting practice that got out of the cage and 
it went down the left field line I think into the seats and how it got around the cage and into the seats down the line I don't know even in batting practice it was as if he was trying to do that huh wasn't trying to do that here but it looked very similar almost like he was looking for something else got a fastball and just tried to hurry to fight it off all the way to the backstop runners going to try to score to Norris with the ricochet blocks the plate beautifully to nail in Ciarte. What a lucky bounce for San Diego and Ciarte tried to advance on ball four and he is out at the plate for the first out of the inning. Well he had his walking lead. He just never anticipated this. This is like it's like he got tricked. You talk about blocking the plate. Yeah. Look at Norris. Hope Ender's not hurt because he went right down with those shin guards. So a lucky bounce for Paul Clemens. He does walk Freddie Freeman first and second one out and Matt Kemp is the hitter. And this is crazy. He might get a ground ball and get out of this inning. Right? One of the first things you do uh, as a trailing runner is if something like this happens, you check to see what the runner in front of you is doing. And Adonis was a kind of betwixt and between at second base. And instead of watching the play develop, he should have been watching Ender. And as soon as he sees Ender go, then he should have gone. He is still in scoring position, but now one out the pitch. Corner. Pitch number twenty four of the inning. And that's one of those pitches we've talked about. That was so far off the plate. All it was going to be was a ball. Never going to get Kemp to even think about swinging at that pitch. Bouncing ball to third. Step on the bag. Throw across, and how about that? Myers held the bag and somehow some way Clemens got a ricochet off the backstop and a ground ball to third to turn a double play and give up only one run in the third inning.
game bobblehead Saturday September 10th when the Mets are in town. Go to Braves.com slash tickets today. I haven't seen Chipper at the ballpark. The last couple of weeks saw him at the Braves Hall of Fame induction ceremonies for Andrew Jones and John Sherholtz. Well, I bet we do during the next homestand because he'll have more opportunities. It's kind of good point. It's kind of tough to catch the Braves when you sneak into town and sneak out, you know, for two and a half days. Do you remember a schedule like this? I was trying to think of that and if there was a tougher stretch. And the only thing I can even remotely equate it to was during the Olympics in 96 when the team was out of town for like 18 days, 18 or 19 day road trip. That's the only thing I can even tie it to. Ryan Schiff leads off and drives the first pitch toward left. Kemp on a sprint. And he makes the grab on the warning track for the first out. Matt could use an easy frame. One pitch and one out in the fourth inning, which historically has been his trouble inning this year. Boy, isn't that the truth? Those, that's just a crazy number when you look at his line for innings and ERAs. Nice running catch here by Matt using two hands. Well done. I, mean, I don't know if there's a way to explain the fourth inning for Whistler versus the rest of his innings pitched. Eight fourteen in the fourth inning. And eight homers. Right off the thumbs from Oswaldo Arcia, who's played with the Twins, the Rays, the Marlins, and now the Padres. His first home run as a Padre came here last night. Also had a double. That's fouled back our way. It's one ball, two strikes. Got away with a high breaking ball there. It was just high enough to be out of the zone. Still one and two. After this series, San Diego heads west to play the Dodgers. San Diego has three games in Los Angeles. Then they go home for the Red Sox and the Rockies. Two balls, two strikes. That's Mark McGuire. Have aspirations to be a major league manager. McGuire is officially the bench coach for the Padres. He was a hitting coach for six years before coming to San Diego, three with the Cardinals and three with the Dodgers. Swing and a drive. That ball is hammered. And Arcia says goodbye. A solo home run cuts the Atlanta lead in half. I wonder if he stayed inside the baseball on that swing. It appeared he did. Looking at it from up here. And he had fouled off a couple of other pitches where it looked like he was trying to guard the plate a little bit before this. Fastball right down the middle. Yep. It's amazing how that barrel snaps through when you keep your hands there, like we've been talking about. And a lot of it has to do, as Kevin said, with your hips helping create bat speed when you keep your hands there. 
So the ball was smoked like the one last night. Sorry, Joe. So the curse of the fourth inning rises up for Whistler again tonight. That's his ninth home run allowed in the fourth inning this year. And now a liner down the first base side is out of play by Norris. And the Padres catcher heads back to the plate behind in the count 0 2. Is just 27 years old out of Goddard, Kansas. Excellent defensive catcher. He's had a rough year at the plate in 2016. He does, though, have 12 home runs. Third time in his big league career, he has 10 or more. Balls out of the ballpark. Didn't get that. Whistler strikes him out for a second time. Matt has five strikeouts. Two out. That's five. Make it four straight strikeouts by Norris. His last four at bats going back to last night. Two one game. Eighth place hitter is Luis Sardinas. He is flat out to left. Here's tonight's one of those nights where Matt has to really battle to try to get through five innings with the lead. He had excellent stuff last time out. He went eight innings against the Diamondbacks. His fastball location hasn't been what it was that night. And the slider, while it's had some good tilt and good break to it, it hasn't been as snappy to left hand hitters as it was in Arizona. Not yet. Golfed foul. Oh and two. That be it might be a case in point right there on that one. It's just not diving to that back foot. And down there when left handed hitters are recognizing breaking ball they're ready to drop the barrel on it. And there's that miss again. Might have been trying to go up and away but that was not close enough to get a swing. Swing and a miss. There is a good fastball at 94. And that retires the side. Arcia hits a solo home run in the top of the fourth. Now it's a 2 1 score.
we celebrate the final 20 games at Turner Field. 20 trivia questions in 20 games here at home. And our Turner Field trivia tonight is what pitcher has the most wins at Turner Field in his rookie season? Kevin Millwood was the first one that jumped out at me. Okay. Well, unlike last night when we got the question sprung on us in the eighth and had about two hitters to come up with an answer, which Joe, as he always does, hit it out of the park. And that may be the way to go for us. Yeah, right? Just <laughs> first guess? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't give us time to talk ourselves out of it. Well, we are on a one question winning streak. Yes, we are. We're not gloating. We know what happens when we gloat. That's true. The questions get tougher. Yeah. So, which rookie has the most wins in his rookie season at Turner Field? Jason Schmidt comes to mind. Nick Markakis leads off for the Braves. Now a 2 1 game. Nick struck out his first time up. Markek has 21 RBIs this month. You mentioned that chip. Freeman has 23. The last 20 RBI month, and I remember this one, August of 2014. Justin Upton had 28. Remember the month he had hitting home runs? Oh, he was every other day. Oh, he was going crazy. We're gonna see Justin this year. He's with the Tigers. Who won today? They beat the White Sox. I think that was Verlander and Sale today. Yeah, that was a good ball game. Tigers got a run in the eighth and then one in the ninth to win it. Tigers are trying to chase down Cleveland in the Central. So is Kansas City for that matter. Detroit now has won eight of its last 11 games. And they are only one game behind Baltimore in the wild card. Well, one team worth watching right now uh, to see how they respond is Seattle. They had made a move. They had gotten close to the wild card, and they lost a walk-off game last night to the Rangers on a home run by Odor that flip-flopped the game. Mariners were up one. They lost by one. And today, they had a day game, and Texas just beat the tar out of them 14-1. to So we'll see if Seattle can figure out a way to bounce back. It's their fifth straight loss and ninth in their last 11 games. Popped up back toward us and just overhead. Wild card of the American League. I mean it's crazy. Boston Baltimore Detroit Houston Kansas City New York and Seattle all separated by four games in the wild card. Yeah like you said last night. Don't overlook the Yankees. They're three and a half back. And the Yankees six and a half back in the East as Clemens issues another walk, this time to Marcakis leading off the fourth. Here's another thing about walks. Uh, and we've seen a lot of it this year. Your team, in this case, Arcia hits a home run to get you back, get one of the runs back, get you back within a run. And you go out there and walk the first guy. You throw him five, six pitches and walk him. Puts all the defensive players on their heels, and it's kind of like, like Myers was last night, shaking their head. Well, we talked about this on the road trip. If a solid major league player is going to hit 270, that means he's going to be out 73 percent of the other times he comes to the plate. Just playing those odds alone means if you allow contact, you have a better than average chance of getting it out. But if you walk everybody, then it takes only one hit to put two, maybe three runs on the board against you. Right. begins in the Padres pen. Jose Dominguez.
Double play ball, but it's past the shortstop, Sardinas. Man, he didn't get much of a jump on that ball. Flowers hit it right on the button. Yeah, he did. Fooled uh, me. I, I'll give Tyler more of the credit there because that was solidly hit. Bang. You're right, though. Combination. A little bit of a slow crossover step on that. So another threat for the Braves. Two on, nobody out. Jace Peterson flying out to left in his lone at bat tonight. That was in the second inning. It's going to be a quick turnaround in Atlanta tonight. Braves and Padres hook up tomorrow. 12 10 start. Jared Cosart, Mike Fultonevich will oppose. We're going to let you out of the cage tomorrow. We're going to let the monster out tomorrow. Are we? Yep. Okay. All right. Just telling you right now, the monster's going to be grumpy because he can't go to sleep late at night after the game. So be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a fun booth, won't it, Val? <laughs> I'll sit over there with Valerie. <laughs> That's a little low. Maybe not a bad idea. Two balls and a strike. And we've been gone so much, I almost felt like wearing my Major League press credential into the booth. That's Good just idea. to make sure Mike Smith would let us in. Mm -hmm. That's it toward left. Slicing, slicing in into the stands. Wires in a couple of seconds. Two two Ooh, is inside. Full count. Four, two walks and a single load them up. And this will be fun. Dansby Swanson, a chance to break the game open. He'll bat with the bases loaded, nobody out. And he's our Zaxby's indescribably good play feature. First 11 games in the big leagues, not too shabby. 300 average, good on base. Four and four on the runs and RBIs, and he's been on base nine of those 11 games. Clemens was lucky last inning to only allow one run. I think he's done here, so we'll see how lucky he is in the bullpen helping him out. I'll tell you how he's lucky. He's faced 16 hitters. He's gone to ball three to eight of them, and he's only down a run at this point. It's 2-1 score with Swanson ready to face Dominguez with the bases loaded and nobody out here in the home fourth.
Padres is at 11:30 Eastern right here on Fox Sports Southeast. If you can't catch it on TV, that's all right. You can stream Braves games on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go, a free app available through your app store. Just download, log in, and watch the Braves wherever you go. Presented by Circle K, home of the world famous Polar Pop Cup. And for you students in high school, feel free to stream the game during your chemistry class, your English class tomorrow. And if your teacher gets upset, just tell them that Joe Simpson said it was mandatory that you watch on Fox Sports Go tomorrow. I like to think of it as a prerequisite. Yeah, that's. I don't know what that means. Yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those things that you really need <laughs> in school. Jose Dominguez, Alexi Ramirez, double switch. Dominguez throws hard 94 to 98 slider in a split and he missed inside Clemens three plus innings two runs so far four walks he struck out two and leaves with the bases loaded here yeah rough night Good cut right on that 97 heater. Dominguez spent a little time last year with Tampa Bay. Mostly at Triple A, but a little time in the big leagues. This year at El Paso in Triple A. Six out of eight in save opportunities, 379 ERA. So he's a former Chihuahua. Yep. The pitch. And you know what? That take right there tells you something about Dansby Swanson. You pointed this out in uh, San Francisco. Pitchers are buzzing the tower. There's no flinch from Dansby Swanson on those mid to upper 90 fastballs on the inner half. Nor is he trying to open up, step in the bucket in order to handle that pitch. He's just taking it and looking for a pitch he wants. And he was. Dominguez has to throw a strike. Yeah, he was saying to Paul last night after the game, if you remember, he was just sticking with his approach. You know, that it didn't sound too complicated. Basically, see ball, hit ball, but I, I have an approach when I go up there. I'm just trying to do what I do and stick with what worked for him before he got here. Well, he might see something good to hit here. Yeah, real small zone right here. Foul that scatters the Padres on the top step. Clemens hurt himself getting out of the way of that. Looks like it got up pretty gingerly, didn't he? Uh huh. That may have been ball four that Dansby swung at, too. Most definitely. Swing and a miss. Nice comeback for Dominguez. He had a 3 1 count. Swanson strikes out. And they're loaded still for Matt Whistler, one man down. That's a huge stat for a major league relief pitcher. First batter faced. And especially in situations where there's trouble aboard, Dominguez got the first. Whistler singled and scored the second Braves run. That came in the third. Ground ball slowly hit. There's one. There's two. And unbelievably for the second straight inning, the Padres pitch out of a gigantic mess and don't allow a third Atlanta run. Fortunate man is Paul Clemens. He leaves allowing two runs. And we go to the fifth.
sports and outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. 2-1 is our score as we head to the fifth inning. Unbelievably, the San Diego Padres got a ricochet off the backstop to get a runner at the plate, then a double play. Then last inning, a strikeout with the bases loaded and a 6-4-3 double play to escape big-time trouble. They are somehow subway still in this game with a 2-1 score going to inning number five. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody be as fortunate in two consecutive innings as that. So Alexi Ramirez will lead off. Remember, he came in in the flip flop batting order for Andy Green. Ramirez, two for six on the road trip. Former star with the White Sox. Right off the end of the bat. Ramirez signed through this season, a mutual option for next year. Swung and missed at a ball in the dirt. His former teammate Tyler Flowers won't need to tag him. He's going to be ruled out. And there's the first of the I, inning. I need to ask somebody about that, that mutual option thing. Do they both have to agree? Or if he says, yeah, I want to stay and play, and the Padres say no, which way does it fall? Well, yeah, it, it, it makes no sense to have an option if you're the team and you don't want the guy, and he's got to say, and he goes, well, no, I think I'll take my 17 million, even though yeah. I hit 104 for you. But you're the stalemate, boat wise. You're exactly <laughs> right. That's a good question. I might take a walk down the hall between innings and see if there's anybody at the store. You know, you know the answer to that. Yes, I do. But you might as well check and make sure that our pal Mark Grant and Don Orsillo are paying rapt attention to game two tonight. Oh, I'll just walk by them and just do a drive by. I'm going to the end of the hall. Oh, with people know what's going on? Yes. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Downstairs too. I tell you what, it's great to see Mark Grant back in Atlanta. There is hardly a funnier man and more dedicated guy than Mark, who's become a very popular broadcaster out in San Diego. And how fortunate as that one is whistled off the front of the Padres dugout. How fortunate are the Padres to have not only Dick Enberg wrapping up his Hall of Fame career, but to have someone as talented and great as Don Orsillo to step into that chair. That's a great broadcast team. That is. It really is. They do good work. And the fact that Mark on his off days can fill in for the San Diego Friar mascot. Yes. And often often does and not miss a beat is a special bonus wasn't it Mark that uh, pretty much created that rally cap that looked like a you know a half hat on the head in 91 I think it was it yeah like a shark shark fin, fin? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. line to short and Jankowski's retired and there's the second out Mark and his great Self deprecating sense of humor might say, Well, that was my contribution to the 91 Braves. Yes. <laughs> but they're terrific people, and it's always great to see them. It's a shame we just see them twice a year once out west, once here in Atlanta. So Whistler has the second out of the inning, needs one more to qualify for the win, but he could use a couple more runs. Will Myers broke his 0 for 15 with a single last time up. And stole second standing up and was left stranded. Boom. Good fastball. Good spot.
Another one up and out of the zone that time and Myers has had a history of wrist problems had to let go of the bat after that swing. Dodgers are having a tough day. They've got a day night double header today with the Rockies. L.A. got shut out seven nothing in game one. They're losing five two in the second in game two. Ooh, just missed man it just missed. Yeah and I heard that they had three different pitchers throw simulated games today at Dodger Stadium. While the team's on the road. Including Kershaw. Talk about a difference maker if Kershaw comes back. Giants might say uh oh we missed a big opportunity mm -hmm. to salt this away and couldn't. I think they've already said that. Yeah. Point. They know they've got a fight on their hands. Two series left with the Dodgers including the final three games at AT&T Park. Dodgers and Giants separated by two games at the start of today's play. That's up and out of play. Do it again. Uh, it's kind of hard to stay away from that pitch when he keeps swinging at it. But I'm still looking for that good slider down and away, like he threw in Arizona that hasn't shown up too much tonight. They're going to try it again right here. And it was perfect. I mean, center cut, and Will Myers wasn't expecting that. Eight strikeouts for Matt Whistler. He gets the Padres in order. And the top of the Braves lineup is coming up, leading two to one. Suzuki and Bartolo Colon featured in that series in New York the two oldest active players in the National League and that's a huge series the Mets have passed Miami in the hunt for the second wild card but the Mets Joe are starting to roll They're four games over 500 they're tied with the Pirates two and a half games behind the Cardinals it's wide open it is wide open isn't it OK I got the uh, low down OK. Swing and a drive hit toward right. Arcia is there and makes the play one out. He's talking to uh, John Sherholtz and to John Copalella. And the way I, I 
hypothetically did it. I said, okay, let's say there's a mutual option and, and you're going to pay me $50 million to play next year. And I say, yes, I want to play. And you say, no, what happens? And the answer was, then it doesn't happen because it's got to be unanimous. So both, both parties have to yes. agree. And I said, well, what about that? What about that 50 million next year? <laughs> and Mr. Sherholt said, uh, why don't we talk about that later? <laughs> Maybe pesos yeah. for yen. <laughs> That'd be a fascinating conversation to have with uh, John Scherholz or John Coppolella. All the options that are available and how contracts are now being structured. And I'll use a case in point. Um, and this is it meant no way to pick on him. Jason Hayward got that gigantic contract with the Cubs. He is not having a good offensive year at all for no. Chicago. He's having terrific numbers defensively saved a lot of runs all that stuff but he has several options in that contract that give him out clauses in that deal so if he goes to Chicago and has two or three terrific years he can opt out of his contract go back out on the market and perhaps get an even bigger contract and I'm sure that was one of the reasons he was willing to sign with the Cubs and not re-sign with the Cardinals Sure, that had a lot to do with it. You got that kind of power in your deal. Sharply hit, and Ramirez can't get it. Adonis is two for three. And that is the first hit off Dominguez tonight. It comes with one out. It's fifth. interesting what you said about different uh, options and what have you, because John Copalel immediately mentioned something like a, a vesting option. There could be something that if you uh, drive in so many runs, play in so many games or something that it automatically vests an option. Freddie Freeman, the batter. Freddie's tapped back to the mound. He has walked. As we said, and as you know, this is the final day of August. I imagine. Probably tomorrow, balloting for player of the month will be consummated. And I've got to think that Freddie Freeman, with his terrific August, is going to get some consideration for that. I would think so. I mean, he's hitting 17 of his last 18 games with eight home runs in those 18 ball games. He's our Academy Sports Leaderboard. How about that fourth and runs, fifth or fourth or rather in on base, third and slugging. It's amazing that there's that many guys ahead of him in homers and RBIs. But they've got 10. Just one more. Fly ball center. Pretty well hit. Jankowski to the warning track makes the play and Adonis will head back to first Freddie just missed hitting it out to left center and he's the second out the other thing that's interesting too about how teams structure contracts some clubs will give no trade clauses other teams won't and that caused a lot of consternation with the Houston Astros for example uh, you might recall they tried to get Cole Hamels last year. Cole Hamels had a no trade, didn't want to go to Houston, went to Texas. Jonathan Lucroy, acquired by Texas this year, didn't want to go to Cleveland, had no problem going to Texas. I mean, it's like anything else, it doesn't hurt to ask, but there are organizations that want to preserve that flexibility that if a deal doesn't work out, they have the ability to move a contract or a player try to either fix a mistake or and or improve their club. Jonathan Lucroy's done a really good job for Texas too. Another bat to an already potent offense. I, I, I could be wrong on this but I my recollection is that the Braves uh, while John Sherholz was the general manager they did not have an offer I'll say they did not offer no trade clauses. No 
balls and a strike for Matt Kemp, who has singled and has hit into a double play. Well, that's the fascinating thing about the game. How do different how differently managers manage, how differently front offices value their own players, how they build their systems, what kind of contracts they offer. Every team is different. One ball, one strike. But to me, that's how the game's really changed in the last 30 years. 30 years ago, you were trading player for player. It wasn't salary for salary. It wasn't international bonus. There weren't there were no such things as international draft pool picks. And there was no arbitration. There was None no free that's, agency. Which certainly didn't benefit the players. Two balls, one strike. Line and caught. And short by Ramirez. Kemp hit a top spin line drive to end the inning. And we go to the sixth where Matt Whistler leads two to one. We count down the final 17 games here at Turner Field. That's ludicrous. Big time hip hop recording star from Atlanta. Oh, I don't know. All the girls here for the uh, team bride party might be kind of have wandering eyes. I don't know. Well, it says on Wikipedia that Ludicrous is a very happily married man, so. Those girls down there, some of them might be also, but that's <laughs> <laughs> well, the way they were looking at out there in the left field, I don't know. Yeah. Ludacris, born in Champaign, Illinois, moved to Atlanta when he was nine. That makes him a native. And Solarte rolls out to start the sixth inning. <laughs> don't tell Chase Peterson that was a roll. Well, it did take one bounce and then spun. <laughs> so, yeah, good point. Meanwhile, Whistler has set down six straight. Four of those six have been strikeouts after the Arcia homer. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. Sorry, Jace. Whew. What do they say? Everything looks a lot easier the further you get away from the field, right? You know, I learned something tonight from Jeff Porter, which in and of itself is pretty amazing. <laughs> but when Jace crashed into the wall in center and he had that ding on his nose yeah. and and <clears throat> like everyone else and including Jace he thought his sunglasses. Oh. Dickerson with a single to center. 
He thought his sunglasses caused that when his face planted on the padding. His sunglasses were behind his hat. So what, I mean, we saw the picture of him hitting the wall, and we and saw the sunglasses, sunglasses flying, right. but they were on the back of his hat. So what, what, he cut it on the fence? Yeah. On the padding or mm -hmm. something? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that was one of the most incredible catches we had seen. I mean, there were two catches back to back, I think. Jace's and then uh, and Revere's. Revere's catch. Yeah. Well, that um, that catch by Jace was like on the last day of the homestand. So he had to get on the plane and he was woozy. Mm -hmm. And I use the term homestand loosely. We weren't here that long. But I didn't know that. I just figured it was when I saw the sunglasses look like Charlie Brown out there that it you'd face planted with them on. Excuse me. I mean, uh, that's that's hard to believe. Now I can't remember where exactly Jay's hit. I, I, and it, if it was at the sign, could it have? Been, if he was on the edge of the sign, could there have been a little raised corner of the signage that might have scratched his head? I, I don't remember. I mean, he hit so hard, it might have been like a, a boxing punch that cuts, you know, just the impact, the pressure impact. Two balls, one strike, two, one game. This has been a very deliberate matchup. So here's the Peterson catch. Check this out. Sunglasses, back of the hat. Take a look. Look at that. Maybe the bill of his cap. But I never noticed that until Bubba told me today. I mean, when all the Charlie Brown thing was going on, I just figured it was sunglasses that cut him and fell off at impact. So there you go. And that was the last game of the homestand, right? Yes. So Jace is lucky because somebody, you know, if I had to guess, it would have been A.J. Przinsky. He would have had the chalk outline mm -hmm. painted on the wall. As that one's off Flowers' glove. Again, Matt missing up and away an awful lot tonight. Runner at second and a full count for Schimpf. A wild pitch. Yeah, we're kind of coasting along here. Um, and it's a one run game, I think, because the Braves have had so many base runners. Especially in the third and fourth inning that you feel like the team's a lot farther ahead than they are. Yeah. It's a one run game. Schimpf a dangerous man and he just took strike three. There's a sharp breaker. There you go. Two outs. Nine strikeouts. Beauty gave up on it, froze him. That ties Matt's career high. And now here's Arcia. Roger McDowell is out for a visit. Do you want him or do you want the struggling Derek Norris? I, I know who I want, yeah. even if it means putting the potential go ahead run on base. Arcia has already hit two homers in this series, has looked good at the plate. Norris has struck out four straight appearances. Braves Live presented by Xfinity is coming up at the end of our ball game. Jerome and BJ are standing by. They'll have all the highlights. We'll have sound from the Braves locker room. Chaz Rowe is getting loose. He will probably be the next Braves pitcher. Meeting adjourned. Let's see how the Braves approach Arcia. I was kind of looking out at the corner of his eye at Tyler Flowers. He might be a little surprised that they're not putting him on. Well, this might be the old give it two tries, see if he swings. If not, fall behind 2-0, oh, go ahead and put him on.
So two balls in the dirt. And a count of two and oh let's see if the Braves. Not yet. Not yet. No sign of an intentional pass. Yeah I for one would like to see that glove hand thrown out there by Tyler. Dansby trying to keep Dickerson close at second. And the 2 0. Swung that time. And he might have swung at ball three. Yeah, well, there was that well placed slider. That one was in off the plate and down. All he could do was swing over the top of it. Yeah, you're right, Chip. That was a ball. Here's our State Farm instant replay. Fastball, and he got it. Second home run in as many nights for Arcia. And four straight sliders, two outside, two inside, two and two. Let's see if Matt can bury another one and set a new career high in strikeouts. He has nine. The pitch yanked into the seats. And that baby ricochets. Good 40 50 rows up. Pitch number six of the sequence. Tell you what Arce is doing. He's making it tough to find a place to go. They're trying not to throw him a strike and for him to get himself out. Every one of these has been a slider. And he's that open stance. He's awfully strong. Wants the ball middle in and probably down a little bit. Not too much room for error. Look at that. Not one pitch is a strike. That's to Matt's credit that they are competitive, close enough to make him swing. Norris is on deck. Braves want to see him in the seventh. Another payoff pitch. A 95 mile an hour fastball. Paul, what a battle here. Well, guys, I like this battle. There's a couple different ways to look at it. What I don't like is Matt Whistler's at 104 pitches. So at some point, you know. You fool around, you fool around with Arcia. Now you try to get him out, in my opinion, because you're going to face Norris and be a little less strength. So I either like walking him or trying to get him out after you got him 2 2. And he lost him on a close pitch. What an at bat. Nine pitches, two on, two out. And now it is Norris versus Whistler. And to Paul's point, if you knew the result was going to be a walk, you might as well just use four pitches that require very little effort. Exactly. They have struck Norris out twice tonight, twice last night, primarily on, on pitches down and away. Sliders breaking away from him, and he's chased. Both swinging tonight, and both swinging last night. Norris came on last night when Bethancourt got hurt. As this one pops away from Flowers. Hector Sanchez was brought up by the Padres once Christian Bethancourt was placed on the DL.
Brett Wallace has grabbed a bat. Pitcher's spot is due next. strike but Whistler got the call Braves are playing Norris away to the off field Inciarte has four or five steps over into right center and Marquecas has come in cheated in just a little bit too so it's another good spot for that breaking ball down and away and see if he'll fish for it. with it and what a way to finish for Matt Whistler a new career high in strikeouts first time he's recorded double digits in the major leagues and it's been a struggle for Matt but he works his way through six innings and he's got a 2 1 lead. Game summary the story tonight twofold number one Matt Whistler and number two the incredible good fortune of the Padres to pitch out of a couple of messes tonight. unbelievable if you weren't with us the Braves had second and third and nobody out and then on a ball four pitch that would have loaded the bases the ball got past Norris went to the backstop ricocheted back and Inciarte trying to score on the wild pitch got tagged out a double play inning over and then in the subsequent inning the Braves had bases loaded nobody out and didn't score. So the Padres very lucky that it's only a two to one deficit. So Matt Whistler 10 strikeouts. That part's impressive. But he really had to work and we got some clarification Joe. Remember we had the dueling bachelorette parties. Uh huh. Well young lady by the name of Kelsey Freeman texted me. And was adamant. Reason why the dudes are wearing the hats too. Uh huh. It's a birthday party, not a bachelorette party. Oh, okay. All right. 
That makes a lot of sense now that I look at it. We appreciate that info. And happy birthday. How about that guy? He's trying to hand the lady the cards and then he snatches it back at the last instant. What's up with that? Three balls, no strikes. Let's put some space between the Braves and the Padres here. Mark Hakus Flowers and Jace Peterson. Second inning of work, full inning of work, I should say, for Dominguez. Well, let me take that back. Third inning. Got yeah. Double play in the fourth. No real trouble in the fifth. What a job he did in the fourth inning. A strikeout and then the 6 4 3 double play. And he's due to hit first in the seventh, so this will be his last inning. And he fills up the count. Well, that's one way to keep AJ quiet. Bet you didn't know, AJ's a second cousin twice removed of Jerry Tarkanian. 3 2 pitch and ball four. There's a start. Lead off walk. He's had a handful of those tonight. In fact, the Padres have walked five Braves hitters. Tyler Flowers had a fourth inning single. Again. Near miss earlier tonight. That time he got nailed. And two are on with nobody out. Question is where? Point of the elbow. Maybe the tricep area, but it looks like right on the point of the elbow. I can't imagine. How much that hurts and how numb your arm must go how just dead it goes. Look at see the mark. Yeah oh yeah already swelling up. Ninety four heater big bruise above the elbow joint. So Andy Green's on his way out. Maybe this is the end of the line. He might be ready to make another double switch. We'll have to wait and see. And that's going to be all for Dominguez. He goes two plus innings. And one strikeout, one hit, one walk, one hit batter. Braves are in business up 2 1 in the sixth.
As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Or continue I should say a leadoff walk and a hit batsman chases Dominguez. And while we have a moment time to revisit our Turner Field trivia which pitcher has the most win at, at Turner Field in his rookie season. Again I'm going to stick with my first instinct which was Kevin Millwood. All right, and we were talking between commercial breaks. The name Chuck James came to mind. Yeah. In 05 Chris Medlin it's one you pointed out. Horacio Ramirez Jair Jurgens. Wow. Uh, choices so I'm going to lay those four out you pick whichever one of the four you I, want. I, because Medlin had a crazy year okay like, you know it was like undefeated I want to go with Medlin. Like 23 and one and yeah the Braves were going to start Medlin then I'll, I, I'm picking for you. And did you mention him. I didn't. Well. What I was am I told, supposed to do. I was told I, I was told pick your best four. <laughs> so it's Julio Tehran. Julio's getting mad at us. Uh -huh. So Jace Peterson's the batter, and the Padres pick the perfect relief pitcher for this situation with two ducks on the pond. Who better than Kevin Quackenbush? I think that's beautiful. It's odd that a guy would have this many games. This is his 48th, and yet he's been up and down three times with the Padres this year. The Bushmaster, 89 to 92. On fastballs, good curveball, slider. And if he were pitching for the Nationals, they would say he's especially adept at pitching foul balls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they would. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike. And that's downstairs. It's two and one. That's the score. Two one. Braves lead it. Atlanta's out hit the Padres five to four. The Braves got their first run on an error, two steals, and a run scoring on a balk by Ender Inciarte. Adonis Garcia doubled home Matt Whistler in the third. And this one's bounced toward second, boxed. And there's only one play, and it's to first. That was a double play ball. But the Padres couldn't start it with Schimpf, and that's a break. Second and third, one down. And San Diego, not a good defensive club. That should have been a double play. Yeah, it won't be because you can't assume the double play. But yeah, it looked like we're going to see a repeat of the fourth and fifth inning. Third and fourth inning, rather. So the Padres are going to walk Dansby intentionally. That's going to load the bases for Gordon Beckham, who's grabbed a bat. He's going to pinch hit for Whistler. Home crowd wants to see Dansby get to hit. But the Padres are playing for the double play. One thing about Gordon, he will be aggressive early in the count on this and may go after that first good pitch. So it's an intentional walk. They're loaded. And let's see what George Bulldog Gordon Beckham can do here. Things started turning in a positive direction for Gordon three games ago. Yeah, a deep double in Arizona, then the homer late in the ball game one day in San Francisco. I think it was Sunday. So feeling pretty good. Again, first pitch. He likes it. Oh, and Quackenbush got the call. Well, that was in there on the Fox tracks, but it didn't look that good from up here. Yeah, 
almost makes you think that it might have been a split finger pitch. I mean, it was letter high. It's like it changed directions. No, it was just a a breaking ball, high breaking ball. Oh two. A brave at every base. Marcakis, Flowers, Swanson. Marquez and Bo Porter are becoming fast friends over there. Nick has spent a lot of time at third base today, but hasn't advanced past there. One hundred ten pitches for Matt Whistler in his six innings. I'll be interested to hear what his personal report card is from the game tonight. Ten strikeouts a career high. As this one's lined into the gap in right center field. That's going to score at least two. Gansby's going to stop at third. It's a sliding pinch hit double for Gordon Beckham. And that's just what the doctor ordered. I tell you, it, that's got to make Gordon feel good. But it's got to make his teammates feel good for Gordon also as hard as he works and as much as he has struggled since coming back from the disabled list to come up with a big hit like this again. His last eight at bats four for eight with some damage that's great. So there's some breathing room for one game now infield comes in with second and third one out and in Ciarte and he bounces one foul past first. It's interesting how the catcher goes out and they have a meeting and then the next pitch is lined in the gap. That'll be a very deceptive line for Dominguez tonight, won't it? Sure will be. Two plus with one hit, two runs, a walk, a strikeout, and a hit batsman. But that only tells part of the story. Getting out of the bases loaded, nobody out in the fourth was really impressive. But the two men he put on with nobody out here in the sixth have come back to score. And Whistler now enjoys a three run lead. The pitch is fouled away. Arlington Mets are still tied to a piece in the eighth inning. Kelsey told you that uh, Christian Yelich tied that game with a home run. That's only the second home run hit by the, Mar by the Marlins in the last nine games. And they haven't been scoring many runs of late. Marlins trying to hang tough in the wild card race. Line drive. That's into right center field. That's going to score a pair. So back to back hits by Beckham and Inciarte, and the Braves have a four run sixth, and now lead six to one. Fell behind in the count, then on a one two pitch. Look at the reaction by Norris. He left the pitch up, line to center. And Derek Norris, all he can do is just slap the dirt. Clutch two strike hitting by Ender. Who now has an 11 game hitting streak. Let's keep it going. Garcia's two for three. He's doubled home a run and singled back in the fifth. A four run Atlanta sixth.
That one hit the spot, strike one. Adonis has had two really good swings tonight. That double, that ringing double off the Xfinity sign in left center. Solid single past the shortstop off Dominguez. Ground ball to second. This time the Padres can turn it. So an inning ending double play off the bat of Adonis Garcia, but a four run sixth extends the Braves' lead. Now it's six to one. Fombre, you know he's going to try to stay in the game, and here he is with a little help from Braves athletic trainer Jim Lovell. An elbow wrap, compression sleeve on the left elbow after this mid 90s pitch smoked him back in the Atlanta sixth. Oh man, look at that bruise already. So Jose Ramirez will come on in relief of Matt Whistler. Ramirez was impressive last night, wasn't he? I'll say. Struck out the side. I, maybe it took him 12 pitches. Something like that. It was crazy. He'd had a few days rest and needed it and was very sharp. So Wallace leads off for San Diego. Hit the seventh inning. Matt Whistler in line for his first win against the San Diego Padres and his second win in a row since coming back from Gwinnett. You look at the Braves' home record, and we know how disappointing this final season has been at Turner Field. Two guys come to mind, not because they necessarily pitched poorly, but they just had poor run support when they pitched here. Here we are, last days of August. Last night, Julio Tehran picked up his first win at home. And here's Matt Whistler, who's one and seven at home, coming into tonight's game. So Quackenbush pitches an inning. Two hits, a couple of runs, an intentional walk, and no strikeouts. So the runs have been distributed, two apiece for Clemens, Dominguez, and Quackenbush. And that one's up the middle. Dansby glides and guns to first in time, one out. Alex 
Jose Ramirez is coming up. Braves defensive positioning has really been good uh, in the last couple of weeks. Guys positioned perfectly for ground balls that are hit normally where you would think would be base hits. And they're right there. Scouting reports have been good. Setting it up perfectly. Yeah, Terry Pendleton doing excellent work. Noah Woodward does all the numerology on where guys should play. I'm sure that Noah probably has a number of outs that have been gained by being in the right position as far as the shifts are concerned. I don't know what that is. Don't know if it's proprietary, but I'll, I'll bet it's a pretty big number. I don't think we've said more than a handful of times that Huh, if they hadn't shifted, that would have been an out. Three and one for Ramirez. Chance for Dansby. Glove on the ground. Perfect play. Yeah, and on a sharp hit ground ball like that, the tendency is to kind of be ready to come up. He never moved like he was going to straighten up. Like you said, kept the glove on the ground. That was nice. He's made the whole range of plays tonight to his left. He's made the backhand play to his right, where he's caught the ball and then thrown it to first in one motion. And that one. Right into the center of the mitt. Yeah, the one you're talking about where he just caught it and threw it was against this guy to lead off the ball game, Jankowski, who runs real well, so he knew he didn't have time to do a crow hop, shuffle his feet. He just caught it and threw it. Bet you that's part of the scouting that Dansby has been going through before each series. Know who's hitting. Know how much time you have or you don't. Consequently, play the ground balls, hit your way accordingly. Easy gas at 97. You know, and he's not over the top. He's not sidearm. It's low three quarters, so there's a little bit of a whip action. Swing and a miss. How about that slider? Wow. Two electric innings in this series for Jose Ramirez. And that sends us to the seventh inning stretch. Braves are in command of game two. It's a 6 1 score.
Top moments in Turner Field history tonight. It's August 31st, 2011, when Craig Kimbrell set a rookie record with his 41st save. He retired the side in order in the Braves 3-1 win over the Nationals. The 23-year-old Atlanta closer finished the season with 46 saves. Here's to 20 years brought to you by Synovus, the bank of here. I enjoyed looking at that replay today and looking at all those names on the back of jerseys as he was high fiving everybody coming off the field and in particular Tommy Hansen and how much we miss seeing him around here and what a tragedy it was to lose him during the offseason. Keith Hessler's on for his eighth appearance. It's been a rocky start for him with the Padres. He worked last night. Gave up a hit and two walks. But miraculously, he got out of the inning with a 1 2 3 double play himself. Mentioned Quackenbush up and down a lot. Well, Hessler falls into that category too. The Padres Triple A club is in El Paso, and he's been up and down between San Diego and El Paso five times. Thirty-six and two-thirds innings, and 28 outings at Triple A with 42 strikeouts, so more than a strikeout per inning pitched for Hessler at Triple A. He'll try to retire Freddie Freeman to start the Brave seventh. Two and two. Milwaukee's beating the Cardinals three one. That's in the sixth. Mets have taken a 5 2 lead over the Marlins. They go to the ninth inning. Here come the Mets. Washington 2 1 over the Phillies. Bottom of the ninth inning at Citizens Bank as Freeman's down swinging. Freddie is 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. Hessler retires his first man. Matt Kemp had a first inning single. He's hit into a double play and hit a hard line drive out to the shortstop. He's made some solid contact against his old club. He hadn't had a whole lot to show for it, including that line out his last time up. Another ricochet off the front of the Braves dugout. Little squibber <laughs> that might turn into magic, and it will. Matt Kemp with a little dribbler spoils the shift, and look at that smile. <laughs> that will look like a line drive tomorrow. So you want to shift on me, do you? Uh huh. <laughs> uh, 
I love it. Two hit night for Matt. So he's aboard from Arcacus. Who takes a strike? Nick's walk twice, scored once. Braves won 7 3 last night. They've put six more runs on the board tonight. As we showed you, August has been a very productive offensive month for the Braves, averaging nearly five runs per game. Maybe they've gone over five with the yeah. work last night and tonight. Six for 14 with runners in scoring position last night. Not as good tonight, but they timed their hits well in the sixth inning. They scored four times to break open what was a white knuckle 2 1 Atlanta lead. Raves are three for eight, Arbuckle tells us, with Risp tonight. One ball, two strikes. And a little looper hit toward third. Long throw back to first. Kim is in safely. And he has a long look over at Salarte. Two outs. This will be an interesting at bat. I want to see how well Tyler can swing with that wrap on the elbow and the guard now. I know he wishes he had that on last at bat. About all the punishment a catcher takes behind the plate, all the foul balls, the shots off the mask. It's almost not fair that when they stand in the batter's box, they get hit by a pitch of any sort. Yeah, that they've got bullseye on them, even as hitters. Nice stop by Norris. San Diego will have their two, three, four hitters up in the eighth. They've got a big five run deficit to work. Flowers with Kemp at first, two outs. Back to the mound, and it's going to dribble out slowly to second, and Flowers beats the play at first. So Hessler in self defense. Couldn't corral it. He knocked it out to the second baseman, but that's an infield hit. Two hits in the inning for the Braves, and Flowers has two hits on the night. And how about the two hits in this inning? Absolute haymaker rockets. One by Kemp that barely rolled to the outfield grass, and that one. Love it. Let's get greedy. 6 1. Chase Peterson's up. Last nine games for Jace. 5 for 11 with runners in scoring position. He's got Kemp at second with two outs here. Washington held on. They beat the Phillies. That just went final. 
two to one. Gio Gonzalez started that game for the Nats. Rockies still lead the Dodgers in game two of their double dip, 6 2. Colorado's got a chance to sweep a double header at home against the Dodgers. How about that? Giants are egging them on. Right? And the Mets just beat Miami. That went final 5 2. That was Bartolo Colon and David Phelps. So the Mets two games ahead of the Marlins now in the wild card. Miami fading. Giants won a day game today against Arizona. They're en route to Chicago. They take on the Cubs tomorrow, four game series. There's a strike. Cubs are at home playing the Pirates, leading two to one. They sure had some good games with Pittsburgh, but Chicago's come out on top on all of them, right? Kyle Hendricks uh, pitched a beauty. Yeah. He's got a 209 ERA and is getting some push for the Cy Young Award in the National League. That's outside, and the bases are loaded. Another walk issued by the Padres staff tonight. That's seven of them. They've also hit a batter. They've had a man reach on an error. And they've surrendered nine hits. Fourth time tonight the Braves have had the bases loaded. Second time for Dansby. He struck out the first time. He was walked to load the bases in the sixth. Now there's no place to put him. So let's see what he can do. Trying to extend a four game hitting streak and didn't get that. Strike one. Twenty thousand eight hundred ninety nine announced as the attendance for game two. Quick turnaround, twelve ten start tomorrow. Atlanta time, pitch low. Swung over the top of that first one. They've tried to go back in there two more times, and he has laid off. Better recognition, count in his favor. Two balls, one strike. Not close, three and one. Will Myers just kicking the dirt, trying to stay loose. Hands on gloves, hats off. In the Padre outfield, another long inning. Three and two. Good fastball.
popped up. Will Myers drifts back and behind first makes the play and that retires the side Atlanta loads them up can't add to a 6 1 lead and we're off to the eight. Saturday, September 17th, first 20,000 fans get a Bobby Cox carried off bobblehead brought to you by Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines. Go to Braves.com slash tickets and get your seats today. I'm sure Bobby will be here for that special day. Special day for those folks celebrating a birthday. Guy in the white shirt, obviously the designated driver, it appears. He's practicing. Uh -huh. yep. And Mauricio Cabrera is going to come on. More heat out of the Atlanta bullpen after Ramirez worked a 1 2 3 seventh inning. Boy, Ramirez has had two good outings, hadn't he? He has. The last two. For Mauricio, he's had a couple of days off. Last work on the 26th. So he'll be fresh and airing it out. You know that. Myers, Solarte, and Dickerson coming up. We're in the eighth. A couple of notes. That one buzzes in at 102. Washington beat the Phillies 2 1, as I mentioned. The Phillies had nine hits total in their series with the Nationals. Four Monday, three Tuesday, and two tonight. That's Yikes. Supported by Todd Zalecki of the Philadelphia newspapers. Play foul. Juris Familia saved the day for the Mets as they held off Miami 5 2. 44 saves for Familia. That's a new Mets team record. Here, Matt Whistler struck out 10 men for the first time as a big leaguer over six innings. This one's rolled towards short. Swanson's got it. And a low throw, but Freddie dug it out. Myers is the first out. Well, he took a little off. That was 101 and got Myers to roll over the top of it. Still haven't seen Shea Simmons. As he's coming back from two years of arm trouble for the Braves. He is active. Simmons back in the big leagues because of Rodis Vizcaino has a sore shoulder. And Salarte takes outside, ball one.
a foul out of play. In the American League, Cleveland won today. They beat Minnesota 8 to 4. To say the Twins are finishing the season with a whimper is an understatement. That's 13 straight losses for the Minnesota is Twins. Is it really? I didn't know that. Top fly, left side, and into the seats. One and two. So depending on how this one goes, they would take over the worst record in baseball from the Braves. Broken bat. Jace to his left. Fields and fires. Nice play. Two down. And here's Dickerson. I can't imagine how hard it is to hit a 95 mile an hour fastball. I can't imagine even further what it's like to hit 102. I think for big league hitters who already know the scattering report on Cabrera, there's a challenge of being able to put it in play. And in some respects, that's like a moral victory if you just make right. contact, put it in play, and then. Maybe the next time around have a little more aggressive swing. There aren't too many big cuts, that's for sure. And just 10 walks for him in 27, now 28 innings. And wasn't that the wrap on him? Uh-huh. Just didn't have command of that fastball. He's been very impressive, there's no doubt. And so for Cabrera, these are important innings that he is pitching because as the Braves go in the offseason and try to put together their bullpen for next year, I'd like him to finish very strong over the final month. Bouncing ball to first. Freeman's got a big hop. Cabrera to the bag. Handled a low throw and made a good athletic play to retire the side. Cabrera bailed out Freddie Freeman there, and it's a perfect eight for Mauricio as the Braves still lead by five. to the bottom of inning number eight time for tonight's Coors Banquet timeless moment this date in 1997 Andrew Jones Grand Slam is the Braves 10th Grand Slam of the 97 campaign breaking the National League mark for bases full home runs for a team in a single season ironically the records broken in an American League Park as the Braves beat the Red Sox 
at Fenway Park. And that's impressive, isn't it? Ten in one year. Braves have had chances for some grand slams tonight. Sure have. Bases loaded four times. As the Padres have had to go four deep in the pen again. Brandon Maurer is on to face Brandon Snyder. Little pinch hits for the Braves leading off the eighth. This guy's usually their closer. He's getting some work in. Throws hard. Mid 90s. Just saw a good slider there and occasional change. Six saves, he leads their club among people who are still on the team. Well, I was going to say, remember, they traded uh, um, Bow and Arrow guy yeah. to the Marlins. Bow and Arrow guy. Um, Chip. Joe. Uh, Fernando Rodney. Yeah, Thank Fernando you. Rodney. Thank you. You're welcome. Whew. Close. <laughs> it's getting late as we. Top the three hour mark. Snyder grounds second. Schimpf with the throw, one out. Game three tomorrow. Well, I hope Mike Fultonevich has a good game. He was extremely impressive when he faced the Giants in his last outing. And these are the kinds of starts for guys like Fultonevich where I think you really want to start to see more. Consistency as far as the really good performances are concerned. Whistler took a step forward today, had to work hard through six innings, struck out 10. But you've heard uh, Tom Glavin talk about this, Paul Bird as well. Sometimes you go out there and you got to figure out a way to win without your best stuff. Right. He didn't have as good a stuff tonight as he had in Arizona, but he made it work. He was a little wild and up and out of the zone with his fastball at times tonight, but he pitched out of jams. And the good thing was to me when you look back is that when he got in trouble, there was two outs already. Two outs in the first, he gave up uh, a hit and a walk. Third inning, two outs, a hit and a walk. He got out of it. Gave up a solo homer in the fourth. That was instrumental. There wasn't anybody on base in front of Arcia. And then he struck out the next two guys. In fact, three of the next four. Well, that's why again I said at the time I'll be really interested to hear how Matt self evaluates this mm -hmm. game tonight. If you're talking about results the results results were great. You know six innings of, of one run ten strikeout ball that's excellent. But I know that Matt Whistler like anybody who plays is a perfectionist at heart. I'm sure he'll say exactly what you did. Yeah, command control of the fastball had to work hard. But as we've said so many times, it's a results oriented business. And on a night where he didn't have A plus stuff, still gave up only one run. I think his reaction in the third inning uh, told you what a competitor he is. Two outs, single by Myers, a walk to Solarte. Ender has another hit. This one with one out. And then he got that comebacker from Dickerson and kind of yeah. slapped the glove kind of in anger like yeah, he was mad. Yeah like I made this a lot harder than I should have. Good work by Ender you got to be greedy. You get an at bat late in the ball game. You got a nice lead. Don't just phone it in. There'll be nights where you're glad you got this knock. Ender and CRT has been on base four times tonight. Two RBIs and a run scored. Two stolen bases. So he's really filled up the stat sheet out of the leadoff spot. Donis Garcia also a two hit game. And he takes ball one. Driven to right and well hit. That ball is going to go off 
the base of the fence. And Ciarte around second is on his way to third. He's going to stop there. And Adonis Garcia has a three hit game with a pair of doubles. The ball is jumping off his bat yeah, right now. Yeah, he, he smoked three balls tonight. This guy throws hard. He's all over it. Don't you love watching him drive the ball to right field, too, and a right center like we saw in Arizona? Good swing. So that gives Freddie Freeman a chance to swing the bat with two more runners in scoring position. Freddie's six game hitting streak is on the line here in the eighth. He is 0 for 3 with a walk. And Freeman, since the All Star break with runners at second and third base, has been feasting. A 4 14 average since the All Star game. And a shot to right, a base hit. That'll score one. Adonis around third will be stopped. The throw way off target. And nobody covered the plate. Had Garcia come around from third, he probably would have scored easily. But Bo Porter doesn't want to take any chances with a big lead. That's right. That's right. And he didn't know that Garcia was going to throw the ball almost into the Braves' dugout. Slider didn't do much. Freddie's all over it. Extends his hitting streak. Picks up an RBI. Again, be greedy. You get a late at bat. Make the best of it. And this was most definitely at seven to one. It's not so much professional courtesy as it is protecting your own player. So seven runs for the Braves in back-to-back -back games at home. Matt Kemp is the batter. He's two for four. Those guys at the top of the order just keep doing it, don't they? Pretty good. Like I said, you know, lineup changes over the course of a season. It's taken a while for the Braves to find a combo that's clicked for them. And Ender Inciarte, 21 runs and a 340 average since moving to first in the lineup. That's going to be deep enough to bring home another run. Easy catch for Jankowski. And strolling home is Garcia. Two more runs across in the Atlanta eighth. It's 8 1 Atlanta. Good night for Matt Kemp against his former mates. And I'm talking about the top of the order, and I look at my score sheet, and five of the runs have been scored from the guys batting from five on down. Top four hitters all have RBIs. Gordon Beckham had a pinch hit double that drove in two. Runs have scored from the one, the two, the five, six, eight, and nine spots on the lineup card. So it's been very efficiently distributed. To center. And that should end the inning. The Braves have scored seven or more runs in four straight games at home. The last time they did that was in 2013. Those are some happy days. 8 1. We go to the ninth.
is sponsored by Chevrolet, Georgia Power, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Ah, the varsity. Raves up 8-1. to one. Do we have time to stop by there tonight on the way home? Well, thanks to the fun-loving guys at the DOT, yeah, probably. Yeah, oh, yeah, as Dad right. used to say. Huh. Yeah. Oh, the fun-loving guys at the DOT decided on the weekend where Georgia plays North Carolina. We got ACDC at the Phillips Center. We got the Braves. They're going to close down two lanes of the connector. Yeah. That was fun last Wasn't night. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody squeeze in. Yeah. Huddle up. Oh, I, I took... <laughs> I I took our poor friends from San Diego back to their hotel last night. Mark Grant was hyperventilating. He couldn't believe it. He said, are we in L.A.? I said, L.A., that's nothing. As Jim Johnson will tune up here in the ninth inning with a seven-run lead. You got a favorite at the varsity? No, I like it all. Yeah. Nothing, no, no standby. Uh, dogs are good. Dogs are good. I know you're. I know you're keen on the cherry limeade. Yeah. I'm. I'm pretty keen on the uh, frosted orange. Oh yeah. Swing and a miss by Schimpf. He's down on four pitches. Good start for Jim Johnson. One up, one down. Seven in a row set down by Ramirez, Cabrera, and Johnson with two strikeouts. Nothing hit out of the infield. Braves have struck out 12 Padres hitters. Was it 14 last night? It was big, yes. It's a big number uh, last night. 12. 12. 12? Uh huh. Tough to win when you have four innings of no contact. Yeah. If the Braves hang on and win here, they will have a chance tomorrow for a three game sweep. They have not had one of those at home this year, but they have had two three game sweeps. Early in the year, you might remember at Miami. Right. And one that snuck up on me was in the middle of June at New York against the Mets. That's right. The winning pitchers were Gantt, Dario Alvarez and Julio Tehran by scores of 5 1, 4 3, and 6 to nothing. And one of those games was the Ender Inciarte play, was it not? Where it he was. He 4 to 3 game. Full Granderson or something and shocked the world. Well, remember that little ball that bounced away from home plate and didn't even get off the dirt? Right. He scored from third. That's what it was, right. And that was one of the most impressive series of the year for the Braves. It, indeed. Pitching, hitting, heads up play, hustle. It's fun to watch. Strike three. Arcia tried to influence that call. And Johnson's got back to back strikeouts. Follow Braves Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bad App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day. Live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. And download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and your tablet. Derek Norris is the batter. Let's just say that Derek's not making any contact. Three more strikeouts for him tonight. That's out of play right side. Two and one your count. You ever notice how the FO tastes like baby aspirin? It does. And it has the same effect sometimes. Is that right? Yeah. I was pre-med for five minutes in college, Joe. Pitch. Going outside. Three and one. I've noticed, <laughs> you know, I, I I realize how that experience affected you with regard to chemical intake. So 
I understand that. Just kidding. The pitch. Swing and a drive down the left field line. That's going to stay fair. And Norris smacks one off the wall. And he'll hustle into second. First time he's hit the ball hard in the series. And he's got a two out double here in the San Diego ninth. Just when you're beginning to kind of feel sorry for him, you didn't want him to hit a double. You just want him to put it in play and right. in the game. <laughs> So here's Hector Sanchez just called up when Christian Bethencourt went to the DL with the intercostal strain. Guessing we'll see Sanchez behind the plate for the day game tomorrow. And slashed out of play. I don't think this is his first time up with the big club. It is not second time. He came from the White Sox on a waiver claim. Went back to El Paso at 324 Triple A. 13 homers, 40 RBIs, and scored 25 runs. Wow. And perhaps he's insurance if Derek Norris departs at season's end. Boy, they've got a lot of players from other clubs. Waiver claims, Rule 5 guys, trade acquisitions. Or a strike away. Jim's overthrown a couple of those breaking balls to San Sanchez and can't get that downward tilt, leaving him out. Swing and a miss. Johnson strikes out the side, and that's your ball game. The Braves pummel the Padres again. 7 3 last night, 8 1 tonight, and a chance for the Braves to do, as Joe said, sweep a three game series at home here tomorrow behind Mike Fulton Evich. Eight runs on 12 Atlanta hits. We'll tell you how it got done when we come back to recap it right after this.